A big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. If you need a website or a domain, go to squarespace.com forward slash James for 10% off your first purchase. Hello everybody and welcome to Wales. I am full of beans today and uh, practically running up this mountain. In fact, I probably need to stop at some point. Get out of breath. I came from down that path and every single time I forget how hard this is. Oh. This table, um, despite what it looks like, does have four legs. I don't think it was wobbling this much last week, but uh, I don't know what I've done, to be honest. Anyway, yesterday, as you saw, I spent the day out in the mountains, which I was very excited to do because I've lived here for five weeks now in Wales and um, yeah, I've not been into the mountains yet. And if you'd told me the day that we moved into this house that it would be five weeks before I got my first day in the mountains, I wouldn't have believed you or I'd have cried, one of the two. But uh, yeah, basically the first week we were unpacking boxes, the second two weeks we were in a national lockdown and the two weeks after that, uh, I've been busy packing your prints from the print sale. So thank you very much for your support and it just turned out that yesterday was the first chance that I got to actually go and enjoy the mountains. And I thought, what better way to spend the day than to recreate a video that I made uh, two, three years ago maybe? Must have been two and a half because it was summer. Two and a half years ago, I don't think it was particularly good. I know that I didn't get any good photos. But the evening that I went up there, basically I spent most of my time at the top of the mountain just thinking, I really wish that I could live in Wales and be close to the mountains and the sea. And that would be so awesome for my photos and videos and just life, to be honest. And basically I wanted to spend a day at the top of that mountain just thinking about how my dream has come true. That was the plan, and I was gonna make a video about that, and uh, well, for the second time in, I think, four, maybe five months, I forgot to turn my Rode wireless mic thing on. It wasn't actually this one, it was the one that I have on me, on my person, and uh, yeah, I forgot to turn it on. So most of the footage doesn't have any sound. When I got home and I stopped swearing, I went straight onto Amazon and I bought this. This is a Sony point and shoot. I can't remember the name of it. Oh, it says it here, ZV-1. And uh, I've read lots of mixed reviews about this camera. It's not perfect by any means. It's not really wide enough to vlog on. It's got Sony menus and the tripod plate screw thing is um, where well, it's right next to the battery door. So if you wanna put any kind of tripod plate on that, you need to unscrew it and take it off anytime you want access to the battery or indeed the SD card. That said, the autofocus is supposed to be fantastic and as you can see, there's kind of like a, a dead cat thing, a mini dead cat on here, protecting the microphones, which for in-body microphones are supposedly very good. And I've come to the realization after yesterday that I don't have the concentration to set up my camera as I need to all the time for video clips when I'm taking photos at the same time. And uh, therefore, I just thought I need to get a point and shoot that I can just literally press record on and not have to do anything else. And uh, that is why I've bought this for the sort of walking clips and stuff. Anyway, I did have a really nice day in the mountains yesterday. I just don't have any footage of it that's, um, well, I've got any sound. So what I thought I'd do instead is make good on a promise that I made a few weeks ago, which is show you how I edited the photo at that stream that I went to, the Roman Bridge, a few weeks ago, just before lockdown. And what I thought I'd do is edit it on my phone, primarily because I've got a desktop and I've got lights and a microphone and stuff set up here. So if I wanted to show you on that computer, I'd sort of have to wheel over there or move all this stuff or bring the computer here. Bit of a pain, so I thought I'd just do it on my phone because it's perfectly possible to edit this photo on my phone. So, here goes. So, I'm gonna use Lightroom Mobile for this because, uh, well, most people use Lightroom. If you don't use Lightroom, don't worry. Uh, most of the things I'm gonna do, in fact, all of the things I'm gonna do, I'd have thought are available in um, other programs. That's the word I was looking for. Completely blank then. Uh, so, this is the original file and uh, it's a lot greener than the finished one but there's lots of other stuff going on as well. So I'll show you how I go about editing this. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to light and I'm gonna bring the exposure up. Because as you can see, 
it's a tad underexposed. The reason I did that was because I get really nervous when I'm shooting in uh, trees or woods that when you've got a really bright sky in the background, you can kind of lose detail in leaves and branches if you're not exposed correctly. So I quite like to underexpose a bit to make sure that I've still got all that detail. Um, I think I've bracketed, but I'm not gonna need to expose your blend for this photo because there's gonna be plenty of detail left in the shadows still. So that's not a problem. But once I've brought the exposure up, I'm then gonna bring the highlights way down and I'm gonna bring the shadows way up. And to be honest, bringing the shadows down and bringing the highlights up, no, other way around, bringing the highlights down and bringing the shadows up is something that I like to do for probably 90% of my photos. Not everyone likes to do it, I do. Uh, I'm also gonna bring the blacks up a little bit as well, I think. Okay, that looks good. Then I'm gonna to go to curves and on the RGB curve, I'm just gonna bring the blacks up again. That's not the RGB, that's the blue. Why is it on blue? RGB, there we go. And I'm gonna make like a, almost like a little Nike swoosh. I mean, not that extreme, not like that, because obviously that looks horrific, but I'm just gonna bring the, the darks up a touch. Something like that, maybe. Uh, then I'm gonna go to the red channel and I'm going to make a really shallow S-curve. Something like that, that'll do for the time being. I'm gonna do the same for the greens, and I'll then do the same for the blues as well. Now the reason I'm not doing this on the RGB curve is that I might want to uh, make changes to these individually later on when I've played around with the colors uh, individually. So I like to do it separately so that I can then tweak this later in the process. But for the time being, that looks all right. Click done. And then next I'm gonna go to effects. Now clarity is important in scenes like this I find because I like to get rid of it. So clarity is basically contrast in the midtones. And in a scene like this that looks kind of mystical, I mean, to be honest here, it looks like there are fairies flying around. It's very, very mystical. So I like to, uh, I like to bring that out. And by getting rid of all the clarity, you can really do that. So something like that, and then I might get rid of some texture as well, just to kind of soften the image out. I'll try dehaze, but I don't want to go too far with dehaze. You go too far with dehaze, you just make it look foggy, which I don't want. Okay, that's good. Next up, color. And color is crucial to this image because, uh, well, I want to make it look as autumnal as possible. So temperature I'm happy with. And to be honest, all these kind of global settings I'm, uh, I'm happy with as they stand at the moment as well. I want to go to mix though. And I'm going to start with green. And I'm going to move the hue all the way to the left. And this is a pattern that you'll notice I continue on the yellows. Uh, budge saturation up and budge luminance up a touch as well. And on the orange, do exactly the same thing. And the reds, I need to be a bit more careful with the reds. But broadly, I'm going to be aiming to do pretty much the same thing. And as you can see, by doing that, the image pretty much immediately is transformed. Uh, now, if I was editing this on my computer, or if I hadn't edited this image before, I'd take a lot more time and care with this. But to be honest, for the sake of this, I just want you to get like a broad idea of how I edit the image. And uh, then if you want to kind of follow suit, then you can tweak things as you see fit. But for the most part, this is the direction that I want to take the image in. Okay, so I think that's pretty good for uh, individual colors. Then I'm gonna click done, and I'm gonna just bring up the vibrance touch, something like that. And I think I can go further with the reduction in clarity. So I'm going to go back to effects and I'm going to take the clarity down even further to try and just make this more and more mystical. Something like that. Texture again, I can take down. Now, even though I want this image to be soft, I still want it to be detailed. So I'm going to go to detail and I'm just going to play around with the sharpening to make sure that it's as I want it. Something like 55 looks pretty good on my phone screen, I'd suggest. The only other thing that I might try and do quickly is I might go to selective and I'll go with a brush and I'll go with a really soft brush and I just wanna paint over these branches. I'm gonna do a terrible job of this 
on my phone screen. <laughs> Something like that. And I'm gonna go to detail. No, I'm not, I'm gonna go to effects. And I'm just gonna bring up the texture and then I'm gonna to go to light and I wanna bring up the shadows in those branches just to kind of make the image look a little bit more kind of 3D is the goal there. I don't know how much of a difference it's made and I can't see quite how bad a job I've done, to be honest, but well, on a computer screen, I, I really would see that. Um, so yeah, that is how I edited this image. So here's the before and here's the after. And I think the end result's pretty nice actually. I think it looks very autumnal and very mystical. Uh, now to be fair, when I first edited the original of this photo, I did it on the computer, I did it all in Lightroom. Apart from at the end, I ran it through Luminar because I wanted the photo to look even more mystical than I'd managed to make it in Lightroom. So in Luminar, which as far as I know, doesn't have a, a mobile app, I used the Soft Glow Mystical. I can't remember what the name of the, um, the tool is, but I used something in that to make it look even more fairy-like and uh, that did quite a good job, but I'm not sure it's really necessary. It looks pretty pretty mystical as it is. I need to stop saying mystical. Uh, but anyway, that is basically that. Just a, a few simple steps really to, to edit this image and uh, I'm really pleased with how it turned out. So it's a shame I can't say the same for any photos I got yesterday, really. Though there was one of a, um, a horse, which I quite liked, but it, it refused to look at me. I say horse also, it's not, it's a pony, tiny little pony. Just kick the camera with my feet. Sorry about that. Anyway, so that's basically that. Thank you so much for watching. And next week, I hope to be back in the mountains with a bit more luck with sound. And uh, yeah, hopefully this will this will do the job. You'll have to let me know what you, what you think. Until then though, thank you very much for watching and a huge thank you to Squarespace for being this week's video sponsor. So if you're looking for a website, Squarespace is the perfect place to look. There are loads and loads of templates to help you make a website that looks exactly how you want it to look. Whether you want an online store or a portfolio or a blog, whatever kind of website you're after, Squarespace has the answer. I've used it for several years. I've gone through multiple iterations of what I want my website to be, and each of them I've been really, really happy with, and I thoroughly recommend Squarespace. So if you want to try it out, then go to squarespace.com, and after that, if you want to make a purchase, then go to squarespace.com forward slash James for 10% off that first purchase. A big thanks to Squarespace for their continued support of this channel, and a big thank you to you for watching, even when I mess up and uh, don't have sand in my videos. Won't happen again. It will, but uh, I'll try even harder next time. See you next week.